excited about that but now I've got the Z up on ramps which is probably still not high enough for me to get under it but I need to start working on the clutch slave and clutch master and get some new fluid in there and that reminds me I need to check on how much fluid I have we're gonna use dot 5.1 we got one bottle in a little bit extra I'm not sure what the total capacity is but bottles 500 milliliters we'll see waiting on a new filter too by the way so this will be a, a, a much better setup with the inverted conical filter sucking air right in through there and it'll be fresh and clean this is obviously seen better day so we're making some progress today right away also going to clean up the bash bar a little bit use a little sandpaper scuffed it up i'm going to spray a little satin black on some of these scuffed up areas just get it looking nice and clean um i also got some of this mesh as i said i was going to a little bit smaller a little finer than i thought actually but i want this to go right here in this region to help protect uh, some of the fins and stuff behind it. And I mentioned that I'd gotten some parts from Z1, so that's what these are here. This is the new clutch slave. We got the insulated clutch fluid line, important. And then the, oh, I guess I'll just go ahead and show you here. We got the rear diff brace. I forgot about this actually. I'm gonna be able to get this installed today too. And I was stupid and I didn't do it. And I should have just ordered them all together. Otherwise, I, I, so I paid shipping for both of these things. We got the, the clutch master cylinder assembly. So we're just, you know, we're gonna replace it. The fluid looks as bad as it does. I'm just gonna replace all of it. All of this stuff is expensive from Z1, of course. I think this is like $80. But I think the, the, I think the clutch slave was. Fifty dollars, but I think you can get it for like twenty bucks at O'Reilly's or something. I just prefer to spend the extra money I got next day, and at least from Z1, you know you're gonna get the right part. So this goes in like this. Pretty simple change out. I'm not gonna film it because there are a ton of videos on how to do this on YouTube already, and they're actually pretty good and thorough. So just go check those out. If I can remember, I'll link them in the description below. But we're gonna get to this. We got the old clutch slave out and I'm just letting it drain through the line uh, into a pan the fluid is so black and you can just see how old this is obviously the original from what it appears it still had the heat shield on it which I see a lot of people don't have the heat shield for it anymore and I actually didn't use it either looks like it's draining out pretty fast actually I was gonna try to do this without getting too much air in the line Just disgusting black um, it's out but look at all that crap down in there so it's drained out pretty well I think we'll just continue on all right I got this thing out this one's a little bit of a biatch It'd be nice to have an extra set of hands because you got to get up under the pedal and to get to these nuts so I think the bad clutch feeling was a combination of a number of things um, first this is just old and bad obviously a worn part uh, you can see how black you can see how black the the fluid was and how the black residue is left in the bottom of this canister we're going to clean all that out so that was poor the fluid itself was trash so uh, you know it had lost all of its properties um, this was in a bit of a rough shape and i can see the hay had it it's probably turned a little bit since but they had it almost adjusted all the way in I'm sure that's because they were feeling that poor clutch feeling also when it was depressed to the floor they could let it out maybe like a half an inch to an inch before the car started rolling there just wasn't enough play really in the pedal uh, so they adjusted that rod all the way out thinking that would give them you know more push in and just give them some more space uh, but then I, when I took this out look at this this is the bolt connecting this fork to the clutch pedal itself. Look at, look at all that <laughs> play. It, it wasn't tight. Uh, I'm not actually sure what's supposed to be in there. Maybe there's new hardware with it. No, there wasn't. But that clearly couldn't be good. 
And we're back. Look how clean that is. Oh my gosh. Minty fresh. Clean the inside of this out with some brake cleaner. Everything's cleaned up dry. We're going to let it dry for a little bit longer. We don't want to dilute the brake fluid. You should have seen the stuff that came out of these two pieces. Oh my God. Another reason why that clutch pedal felt terrible. Old rubber line. Heat shielding. Very rough shape. That was good. We got all this changed up. New clutch line is here. There's the new slave. Oh, we just got to get this thing bled. There, finally got her all bled. That was a little bit of a project. Look at how nice and clean the fluid is now. This is Motul 5.1. And we should be good. Clutch feels pretty good, but I got to get it out on the road. See how it actually feels. But man, when you change the slave and the master cylinder, it really, you know, obviously you're, you're putting all the fresh parts in. So there's a ton of air in the system. So pumping it through, getting all the bubbles out, uh, it's quite a process. So make sure you got somebody on hand to help you. My daughter finally got home right at the right time. So we got her accomplished. She's looking clean. Still got to get down deep on the strut towers, you know, down along sides. But engine bay is now looking good. My damn filter hasn't shown up yet today. Shipping. Shipping problems, FedEx problems, God, FedEx sucks. Also cleaned up the bash bar a little bit today, sanded it up, and then uh, put some fresh paint on it. I hit it with a silver marker, damn it. There, took care of that. I did get some mesh too to go on the back side of these, at least the first two levels. I think it'll look decent. I had it held up in place. This is for this one. Um, but just trying to figure out how to get it to stay in place is going to be the challenge. Uh, just maybe some some good glue, uh, screws and washers. I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet because I want it to look nice. But I also don't want it to fly off at any time. So I think I'm just going to do this middle section and then this top section here. And it's just going to protect everything behind it. I think it'll be a good addition and it looks pretty good. It's subtle, subtle enough. And the next thing I need, I want to get done, is get this. I want to get this washer fluid reservoir off. Another little, another little one way up in here, kind of tight. I guess you just gotta get it loose, and then you can get it. There's a third one holding this spot on right here. Pretty tight. Ow, it's loose. Oh, thank God. Okay, now we just got lines and stuff. clips are seized. Now we're left with some danglies. Figure out what to do with the washer fluid hoses. Uh, and then obviously the plugs. I'm not really sure where that went. I ended up taking the wheel off just because it's easier to kind of work around under here. Have access to everything and figure out a way to tie these things up. I might try to tuck them up in the hole up into the engine bay. We'll see. Let's take a gander. Little plug was for the headlight, by the way. I ended up just wrapping the washer fluid hoses back around underneath. We might zip them, zip time over here to a uh, bracket or something. Uh, and then these, I think I'm just gonna tuck in behind here. And there's a couple of holes in here so I can just run a zip tie and just make sure they stay in tight in there. And then they're kind of protected from the weather too, you know, and behind this uh, radiator support. Just like that. Cool. Aside, it's, I was going to say it's pretty clean, but it's dirty as hell, but uh, pretty clean. 
I got everything tucked back in behind the radiator support, uh, and then just a couple extra zip ties. Zip tie, zip tie the world, guys. Zip tie the world. Uh, but it's just pulled back. That way, it's kind of protected from the front end of the car. Everything flying past the front kind of zips by this stuff. Um, I don't like that there's no fender liners. I'm gonna take a look and see what we can find for those. I'd like to cover that up at least so we don't get stuff going back in toward the door. Um, but definitely want to protect the headlights and the electronics and stuff like that. And then this big opening into the engine bay, we don't want to be slinging stuff. Now I know this isn't going to be a daily driver, but you know the chance we get caught out in the rain in South Carolina is, is pretty high. So it's always raining, especially during the uh, winter months and spring and a lot of summer. And the fall, it rains a lot too. Looks much, much better without that tank hanging there. And you can see this rear dip bushing is completely shot. This one is terrible. This one has been failed for a long, long time. So luckily it doesn't cause more serious problems. We're going to do a little sketchy fix to this window urethane, some windshield urethane to just fill these cavities a little bit to add a little bit of rigidity and install the rear diff brace and that should help give us a little bit more support until we get the rear diff bushings done. Here's a look at the new rear diff brace that we're going to be going with. Just a couple pieces of hardware and the single unit. Should be a pretty relatively simple install. Put the bolt through it <laughs> and through the bracket so you don't drop. And that's it guys. Pretty simple installation. I'll leave a link in the description below. Yeah, much better without that tank there. Sweet. I'm gonna touch up the rest of the bash bar too. It actually looks really nice with that satin black. So next project is gonna be fixing these up. It's gonna pop these off, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. This will be its own little separate video probably. You can see that they're just beat up. So we got a good start on these already, guys. We've got them sanded down and smoothed out really nice. We're making some good progress. So make sure you check that video out in the process of filming it right now, obviously. So stick around. Um, we got the we got the Z back up on the stands. Uh, you know, clutch is giving me issues still. Uh, it's bled right. Clutch feels decent, but I feel like we're not getting it. We're not getting enough travel. We're not getting it pressed in far enough. So. Um, once it gets warmed up, it uh, doesn't like to go back into gear. I mean, it goes, but it goes hard, first and reverse particularly, uh, and it shouldn't do that. So I don't, I'm not really sure what the problem is. I don't want to adjust that rod too much. I know people will say that's a solution, but uh, we're just going to keep messing with it. I might have to bleed it again, uh, maybe pull the, the brake or the uh, clutch master out and look at that rod a little bit. I'm going to wait till we get that the real clevis pin uh, because that I think makes a big difference on um, you know movement up front the amount of play we have. Um, so there's just some things I want to make sure it's sorted well before we you know continue to drive this thing especially if we continue to drive it hard. So ugh, more waiting. Hurry up and wait. Story of my life. Thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate the continued support. We'll see you in the next one.